Hey guys, this is Brian again. Um, today we're going to be looking at the uh, speed flow. I haven't done a whole lot on these, mostly because these are a lot more labor intensive than most of your standard sprayers. But uh, I had a uh, request by a viewer, uh, last name's Martinez, who wanted me to go over a specific type of problem with the uh, speed flows. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, as always, with the proper safety equipment. This is a working shop, so there's times I have to stop my videos in order to answer phone calls or talk to my customers. But otherwise, I try to do this straight through so you can see what you actually have to do. So, Martinez, uh, I'm not gonna try to pronounce his first name, but his last name's Martinez, uh, requested that I go over this particular issue. He's got a problem where his speed flow is building pressure, but it's very low pressure. The pump stops pumping, there is some pressure on the hose, but there's very low pressure, no matter how high he turns the pressure up. Okay, so uh, these are different in the sense of most of your electric sprayers. These have a pressure control right here, and it's basically done through hydraulics. There's a spring, and there's a piston that pushes down, and that compresses that spring. It needs higher pressure to lift up in order for the hydraulic fluids to move from the hydraulic pump through the hydraulic motor. That's how your pressure increases. So he's, his issue again is he's got pressure, but it's very low pressure and he can't increase it by turning up the, uh, the control here. It's his max, but he's got very low pressure. So it's actually not hard to do in concept, but it can be difficult because things have a tendency to get tight over time. So this is your pressure control. There's a sticker that usually has this hole covered up. You could just cut it out so you could see it. On the inside is going to be an Allen screw. You're going to take that Allen screw all the way out. That's a set screw. You're going to take it all the way out of the cap. Once you've done that, you're going to have on the underside of this, and I'm going to, this is a brand new one here. So this is, this is the piece here without the cap. Okay? Let me see what we got here. Best thing to do is remove the silver cap as well. So take the set screw out and you're going to take that cap off. And the way to do that is you're going to take this knob and you're going to turn the pressure all the way down as far as it will go. And underneath here, and it's going to be kind of difficult to see, underneath here you've got this hex nut, if you will, but it's not actually a nut, but it's hex shape. You're going to stick a wrench on here and you're going to put a pair of vice grips or something on here to unscrew this. And it's going to be hard. It is not going to come off easily. Now, the alternative to this is you can unscrew this piece and the whole nut and everything will come off. Now, if you do that, I'm going to show you what you're going to have here. So, this, this is the piece here. Uh, sorry about the video. So this is the piece here, sitting like this. So once you unscrew this, you gotta be very careful. You gotta take this off. There's seals, O-ring seals, there's oil. This, this actually will move up and down inside. And there's actually, normally there's springs and whatnot in here. So when you take this apart, be careful so it don't pop out and you lose your parts. You wanna have just this. And once you have just this, you can set this with the knob on it in the vise. You can put the vise on the knob and put your wrench here, and you'll unscrew this from the knob. Uh, I, I don't usually like doing this because this, this is hard to do in the sense that it takes a lot of effort and it's very easy to damage your parts. But once you've got the knob off, I'm going to stick this back on real quick because we don't need it like this anymore. When you put this back on, when you're done, you're going to put this on tight. Make sure everything's still inside. But once you're done, the knob is off, the set screw is out, you've got another Allen set up here for the adjustment. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the way this works, when you tighten this down, it compresses the spring and uh, the plates inside of here. 
So what has happened in this situation is it has become out of a out of calibration. This is actually ridden up or down too low on this shaft. It should be up higher. So it's bottoming out on this knob before it can reach the pressures that you need. So now that you've got the knob off of here, this is do not take this off of the, the hydraulic pump. Now leave this on. This is just for demonstration. Once it looks like this and the knob is off, you'll start your machine. <clears throat> Pressure gauge is perfect to have for your fluid. But if you don't have uh, a pressure gauge, you're going to have to do this by sound. So you're going to take this, put your uh, Allen wrench in it. You're going to screw it down about three counterclockwise, about three turns. That drops the pressure. Then you're going to start it up, prime valve open to let the pressure off. Then once the pressure is off and you've got the system primed up, you're going to close your prime valve again, let it build pressure, and stop. And you're going to take an Allen wrench in here and you're going to turn it a half a turn. And it'll, it'll start to, to, to build pressure more. And you're going to turn it another half a turn and another half a turn. And you're going to keep turning this until it gets to where it's building either on the gauge 3300 PSI or the motor begins to struggle slightly and then you're going to back, uh, you're going to stop your adjustments, okay? Now that's going to be your maximum pressure. That's going to be the maximum pressure you're going to you're going to want to run your machine at. I highly recommend the gauge. I highly recommend you take this to a shop and let somebody else do this who's certified to do it. But in a pinch, this is to help get you by. So once you've adjusted this up to you're building the pressure that you need, you're going to stop. You're going to turn the engine or the motor off. You're going to easily let off the pressure by opening up your prime valve. Now everything is where it needs to be. Now this is, I'm going to move somewhere else so we can uh, free up one of my hands here. Okay, so this is still on your machine. It's going to look just like this. We're going to make sure that this is tight. and This has already been adjusted to the, to the pressure that you need. So now you've got to put your knob back on. And you're going to ha have yourself the uh, Allen wrench that you use to tighten it up. This, this is going to be tightening. Tightening is going to be clockwise. Counterclockwise is going to be loosening the pressure or lightening the pressure. But once you have adjusted where you need it to be, and this, this can be hard to turn. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm not sure I did or not, but if you put this in a vise like so, you got it good and tight whether it's uh, you're not going to have it in here it's going to be separate then you can get the vise to hold that while you make while you loosen your uh set screw here inside of the housing but once you've made your adjustments and this is still on the machine at this point this is again demonstration so this is going to still be on the machine this is where it needs to be. So if you just try to screw this on here, what's going to happen is uh, when you get to a point, it's going to start to make an adjustment, increasing the pressure. You don't want that. So you're going to stick your Allen wrench through, and then you're going to tighten this up and ensure that this does not turn. You just want this knob to turn. So you're going to Hold, uh, it might actually work better this way because you got leverage on it. So you're going to hold it and then you're going to tighten this up and you're going to tighten it all the way to where this is bottoming out based on the maximum pressure that you say. If I do it now, then you're going to have this is the situation you already have. You're, you've got low pressure. Uh, if you got too high of a pressure, then you're going to need to adjust it uh, opposite. But once you've got this set, you're going to adjust this knob down to stop right here. Once you've got it where it needs to be, then you're going to take your set screw that you originally took out, and you're going to put it in, and you're going to run it all the way down until it hits, bottoms out on the inside. And when it bottoms out, now that knob is tight against this uh, set screw on the inside. So you'll be able to adjust up and down on your pressure turning this. Don't mean to make this such a quick video, but this is really something that I don't 
like most people doing because it gets overly complicated and without the right tools it can be difficult. Um, the alternative to this would be leaving it, uh, taking the screw out, and if your pressure is too low, again, set, uh, set your Allen wrench inside, loosen this up, then tighten up the Allen or the set screw on the inside, and then once your pressure gets there, tighten this down till the bottom's out and then reinsert the set screw, the lock set screw on the inside and that'll lock your knob in place. Hope this is a help. Uh, if you got any questions or requests, uh, drop them in the uh, comments and I'll see what I can do to help you out. Thank you.